Hey, have you subscribed? Please do. Thank you for subscribing. Now, today we are looking at bank reconciliation. We are looking at bank reconciliation, and this is uh, one of our topics in the CPA financial accounting, as well as in the fundamentals of accounting at the undergraduate level. I believe uh, you've looked at preparation of cash books before, most especially the two column cash book where we have the bank column as well as the cash column now when we talk about bank reconciliation here we are looking at the bank statement and the cash book but when I talk, when i talk about a cash book just know that i'm strictly looking at the bank column of the cash book now when we are recording transactions in the books of accounts we follow what we call the double entry bookkeeping system now under double entry book bookkeeping system uh transactions are recorded twice in the books of accounts the transaction will be debited in one account then it will be credited in the corresponding account when it comes to our particular scenario here or when it comes to our topic of today bank reconciliation in theory the entries that normally appear on the businesses bank statement should exactly be the same as those in the business cash flow now, if these transactions or if these entries appearing on the bank statement are the same transactions or entries in the business cash book, then you expect the balances to be exactly the same. That is the balance as per the bank statement and the balance on the cash book. Those two balances should be the same. Remember, I told that when I talk about the cash book, just know I'm referring to the bank column of the cash book. What is the cash book and what is the bank statement? Now, the cash book of a business is the record of how much cash the business believes that it has in the bank. Here, as I've told you, I'm strictly focusing on the bank column of the cash book. It's a record of how much cash the business believes that it has in the bank remember you will debit the receipts in your cash book in the bank column and whenever you withdraw money from the bank whenever you make payment through the bank your cash book will be credited at the end of the period there will be a closing balance in your cash book. bank statement when you talk about a bank statement Bank statement is bank statement is a copy issued by a bank to the customer, showing the customer's current account maintained at the bank. So as you're recording in your cash book, the bank will also keep a record of each and every transaction through your current account. At the end of a particular period of time on request, the bank will prepare a bank statement, and this bank statement will show all the transactions through your account, the debits as well as the credits. Now, one thing you need to know when it comes to the bank statement, whenever you deposit money on your account, the bank statement will record this on the credit columns. Then when you make withdraws when you make payment through the bank then on your bank statement those payments the withdrawals will appear in the debit column of your bank statement but sometimes you find that the balance as per the cash book may not be exactly the same as the balance on the bank statement 
there may be some differences in the balance, which calls for bank reconciliation. Now, whenever the cash book balance is not the same as the balance as per the bank statement, then there is need for bank reconciliation to find out exactly what is the cause of these differences in the balances. There are three common explanations. There are three common explanations which we are going to look at, which explain why there may be differences between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. Don't forget to subscribe. Senior Huntington wishes you a nice learning. Enjoy. In case you have questions, please, you can ask your questions in the comments section of this video. I'll answer you immediately. Now, one of the causes for the differences between the balance as per the cash book and the balance as per the bank statement, one of the causes is errors. Errors in calculations, errors in recording incomes or payments are more likely to have been made by you than by the bank. But of course, it is conceivable that the bank has made a mistake too. Banks also make mistakes, but most especially, most of the errors made are likely to have been made by the, cash, by the cashiers, by the accountants of the business. Errors of omission, where transactions are completely omitted in the cash book. But of course, you find these transactions on the bank statement. So one of the causes for the discrepancies in the balances is errors. Number two, we have what we call the direct debits. Things like bank charges, bank interest, the bank might deduct charges for interest on, on an overdraft or for its services, which you are not informed about until you receive the bank statement. When such deductions are made on your bank statement, you will see uh, these charges, the interest in the debit column. And remember, these have not yet been captured in cash book simply because you have not being informed about such deductions until when you receive the bank statement. So you have items on the bank statement, which items are not anywhere in your cash book. So whenever we have such direct debits, then the balances cannot be the same. Unless the direct debits have been captured in the cash book, which is not likely to be the case sometimes. Then we have what we call the timing differences. When you talk about timing differences, there are two main timing differences between the bank columns of the cash book and the bank statement. One of them is unpresented checks. The unpresented checks. When you talk about unpresented checks, these are checks issued, but of course not yet recorded on the bank statement. Just imagine you're paying a supplier, your supplier, but you're going to use a check. You write a check, you issue it to this supplier. Now the supplier has to present this check to the bank for payment. But what happens? If we request for the bank statement, say on 31st December 2023, when this supplier has not yet presented the check to the bank for payment. Of course, I already have the check in my cash book because I had to create my cash book because I'm paying the supplier. But of course, the check has not yet been presented to the bank for payments. So I'll be having a transaction in my cash book. But of course, the bank has not yet recorded the payment because Maybe the supplier has not yet presented the check to the bank for payment. So at the end of the day, the balances will not be the same. Then we have what we call outstanding lodgements, or sometimes what we call the uncredited checks. These are amounts paid into the bank, but not yet recorded on the bank statement. Scenarios where customers issue checks, to you immediately you record such checks as received 
in your cash book on the debit side but unfortunately you find that these checks have not yet been credited on your account because of different reasons as we shall see so the balances cannot be the same the balances cannot be the same then the other cause can be simply because of the dishonored checks now a dishonored check is a check which the writer's bank has refused to make payment upon and of course there are different reasons as to why the bank may dishonor a check talk about reasons like differences in signatures the bank has your specimen signature but if i present a check where the specimens where the signature on the check is different from what the bank has post the bank is likely to dishonor this check errors in amounts insufficient funds on the drawers account stale checks or what we call expired checks these and many other reasons may cause a check to be dishonored so dishonored checks may also be one of the reasons for the differences between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance then we have what we call direct credits a direct credit uh, this is a method of payment that allows individuals or organizations to transfer funds directly from one bank to another this can be done electronically either by using online banking services or through a direct transfer using the account information where we have direct credits here your account will be credited directly but you may find that such credits have not yet been captured on the businesses bank or on the cash flow so whenever this is the case then we have to do what we call bank reconciliation what is bank reconciliation? I've told you we do bank reconciliation only if the balance as per the bank statement is different from the balance as per the cash book. Now, bank reconciliation is a comparison of a bank statement with the cash book. We try to check what we have on the cash book with what we have on our bank statement. Differences between the balance on the bank statement and the balance in the cash book will either be errors, timing differences, and those other reasons we have looked at. And they have to be identified and satisfactorily explained. Bank reconciliation statement. Now, in the process of bank reconciliation, you will prepare what you call a bank reconciliation statement. Now, a bank reconciliation statement is a calculation comparing the cash book balance with the bank statement balance. What to look for when doing bank reconciliation? Of course, it's a process, but we have some things which we have to look for when doing the bank reconciliation. If you are doing bank reconciliation, you may have to look for the following items. We have to look for the corrections and adjustments to the cash book. What corrections are we going to make in our cash book? What adjustments are we going to make in the cash book? Now, payments made into the bank account or from the bank account by way of standing orders which have not yet been entered in the cash book. This is one of the things which we have to look at first. Look for those payments. That have been made into the bank account either by way of standing orders but they have not yet been entered in the cash book look for such items because you will have to enter them in your updated cash book remember in this process you're required to prepare an updated cash book so look for those payments that are on the bank statement but they are not yet credited in your cash book start with these 
enter them on the credit side of your updated cash flow. Dividends received on investments held by the business paid directly into the bank account, but not yet entered in the cash flow. We refer to these as direct credits. These direct credits, you likely not you you likely to see that they will be missing in the cash book. And of course, if they are missing in the cash book, then you have to debit them in your updated cash book because in the bank statement, your account has been directly credited, but the amounts have not yet been debited in your cash book. So what you have to do as you're updating your cash book, you have to debit all the direct credits. Bank interest and bank charges not yet entered in the cash book. If you say that you have such information, bank interest, bank charges, they're not appearing in the cash book. As you're updating your cash book, these items have to be entered in the updated cash book. These are some of the adjustments you have to make. Checks drawn by the business and credited in the cash book, but which have not yet been presented to the bank or cleared. And of course, you don't expect to see them on the bank statement. These are known as unpresented checks. These are known as unpresented checks. But now these are items reconciling the corrected cash book balance to the bank statement. When I'm reconciling the corrected cash book balance to the bank statement, then these are the things I'll have to look at. The unpresented checks. So I will present the unpresented checks when preparing the bank reconciliation statement because these will be used to reconcile the corrected cash book balance to the bank statement balance. Then the checks received by the business paid into the bank and debited in the cash book, but which have not yet been cleared and entered in the account by the bank. And so do not yet appear on the bank statement. These are commonly known as outstanding lodgements or deposits printed after date, or sometimes referred to as uncredited checks. These uncredited checks are also items reconciling the corrected cash book balance to the bank statement balance. Preparing a bank reconciliation statement. Now, here we have a step by step summary of the procedures which you have to follow when doing the bank reconciliation. Reconciliation of the bank statement balance with that shown in the cash book should be carried out in the following way. From the bank columns of the cash book, tick off in both the cash book and the bank statement, the receipts that appear in both. So look at the debit of the cash book, look at the credit of your bank statement, then tick off those receipts that appear in both. Of course, at the end of the day, you will see that some receipts will not be ticked. From the bank columns of the cash book, tick off in both cash book and the bank statement, the payments that appear in both. Look at the credit of the cash book, look at the debit of your bank statement, tick off those payments that appear in the cash book and at the same time they appear on your bank statement. Then you will have to identify the items that are unticked on the bank statement and enter them in the cash book on the debit or credit side as appropriate. However, if the bank has made a mistake and it debited or credited an amount in error, then this should not be entered in the cash book but should be notified to the bank for them to make the corrections. So corrections of those errors made by the bank, we don't enter such corrections in the cash book because it's not sure who made the error. It's the bank. So such errors made by the bank, we shall see how to deal with them. But of course, we we'll present them when preparing the bank reconciliation statement as we shall see in the illustrations.
the amounts will need to be entered on the bank reconciliation statement. The amount will need to be entered in the bank reconciliation statement, those errors that have been made by the bank, as I've told you. Now, the bank columns of the cash book are now balanced to find, up, to find the up to date balance. We have to adjust our cash book balance, or we have to bring it up to date after making the corrections and the necessary adjustments. Then after coming up with the updated balance of the cash book, bank column, then we have to start the bank reconciliation statement with the updated cash book balance. So in your bank reconciliation statement, you will start with the updated cash book balance. In the bank reconciliation statement, you have to add the unticked payments shown in the cash book. These will be the unpresented checks. In the bank reconciliation statement, you will have to deduct the unticked receipts shown in the cash book. These are the uncredited checks or what we call the outstanding lodgings. The resulting money amount shown on the bank reconciliation statement is the balance as for the bank statement. Remember, you're trying to reconcile the cash book balance the bank statement balance. So after doing your bank reconciliation statement, the resulting balance in that statement or the resulting money amount shown on the bank reconciliation statement should be the balance as for the bank statement. The layout which we normally use for the bank reconciliation statement is shown below. Of course, you have to write the name of the business, the statement you're preparing. So I will say XX Limited, depending on what we have, XX Limited Bank Reconciliation Statement as at. So we show the balance as per the adjusted cash book. We add the unprecedented checks, then we lace the unprecedented checks to come up with the balance as for the bank statement. Now there will be unusual items on your bank statement. Uh, for example, there will be out of date checks. Uh, those are the checks that are expired. The bank will not pay such checks. So they can be written back in the cash book, i.e. debit your cash book and credit the other double entry account involved. But of course, uh, the debit or credit will depend on how the check was initially recorded. Then we have what we call the returns, in brackets, dishonored checks. The check received by the business is entered as a receipt in the cash book and then paid into the bank, but may be returned or bounced by the drawers, in brackets, issuers bank to the phase bank because Maybe the drawer has stopped it. The check has been returned by the bank either because the drawer has no money or because there is a technical problem with the check. It is not signed. So because of such reasons, the check may be returned or it may be dishonored. Of course, a check that has been dishonored in this way should be entered in the bookkeeping system, depending on whether it was a receipt or payment. Bank errors, of course, as I told you that the bank can also make errors sometimes. The errors made by the bank can include a check deducted from the bank account, which has not been issued by the business. Sometimes, of course, such can happen. A receipt shown on the bank statement, for which the business is not the correct recipient. Okay. Check is for KK Limited, but you find that the bank is recording this check on the account of MOK Limited. Okay. Standing orders and the direct debits paid at the wrong time or for the wrong amounts. So you're likely to find such errors made by the bank. 
Now, when an error is found, it should be queried immediately with the bank. The item and the amount should not be entered in the business's cash book until it has been resolved, until it has been resolved. If in the meantime, a bank reconciliation statement is to be prepared, of course, the bank error should be the bank error should be what? The bank error should be shown separately. Okay. Then uh, we have bank interests received. And of course, for certain types of accounts, banks may pay interest to their customers. When this happens, the bank statement of the customer shows a receipt for interest received or bank interest received. Of bank interest or bank interest received. You're also likely to find things like bank charges and interest paid. Of course, from time to time, banks charge customers accounts with an amount for service charges, i.e., the cost of operating the bank account, the interest paid, okay, the borrowing cost when the bank account is overdrawn. You're likely to find such bank charges and interest paid. Of course, on the bank statement, such items are shown in the payments or paid out column, but these may not be in the cash book. So you need to know that these bank charges and the interest paid, I'll have to update my cash book, and these items will appear on the credit side of the DTB cash book. Why do we do bank reconciliation? What are some of the importance of bank reconciliation? or oh, the importance of a bank reconciliation statement. Uh, a bank reconciliation statement is important uh, because in its preparation, the transactions in the bank columns of the cash book are compared with those recorded on the bank statement. Now, in this way, any errors in the cash book on the bank statement will be found and can be corrected, okay? Either you can advise the bank if the bank statement is wrong, still we can be able to advise the bank on such issues. So bank reconciliation statements are very, very important. Then the bank statement is an independent accounting record. Therefore, it will assist in deferring, in deterring fraud by providing a means of verifying the cash book balance. So when you have bank statements at the end of the day, they will assist in detect in deterring fraud or in detecting fraud or preventing fraud because the cash book balance has to be verified. Then still by writing the cash book up to date, the business has an amenity figure for the bank balance to be shown in the third balance as well as in the financial statements. So that's another reason as why bank reconciliation statements and the bank reconciliation exercise is of benefit to the business. We can come up with our corrected figure for the bank balance, which we have to show in the financial statements. We have some other terms used in banking. We have standing orders. We have direct debits, which you can look at. And then uh, just as with anything else, omitted from the cash book, items of this type need to be included in the reconciliation and entered in the cash book before balance will get off at the end of the period. Of course, you expect not to see standing orders being entered in the cash book, direct debits, until when the business receives a bank statement to see that there are some charges that were made from the account, though they have not yet been captured in the cash book. So as you're updating your cash book, such items have to be entered before balance is off. Now, in my next video, I will show you how we do the bank reconciliation. I'll get some sample questions. We'll see how we can do the reconciliation step by step. This is your tutor, Senior Huntington. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel such that you don't miss out 
the illustrative examples in the next videos. Thank you once again for watching. Sign out.